Hello and welcome to another edition of Green Angle, where we examine environmental issues and proffer sustainable solutions. I am Esther Mapariola. Earth Day is an annual event which demonstrates support for environmental protection. To this end, several eco-friendly activities were held to sensitize the public on the need to nurture, protect and preserve this planet for the next generation. The Earth, as we know it, provides us the food we eat, water to drink, and the air we breathe. Mankind depends on the Earth for survival. While many may understand this, others have a different view on what the Earth means to them. Earth means life. It's a place where we live, it's a, it's a planet. This Earth that we are living, this is not the last place to live. At least we are still going to somewhere, but for now, this is the earth that we will stay to experience the coming one. The earth keeps us alive. Without the earth, we'll, we'll be dead. We can't go to other planets. Some planets are not self-sustaining. Scientists say climate change and other environmental degradations are threatening Earth's natural systems, leading to new diseases that can cause the global economy to break down. Although there is no consensus on the origins of the um, pandemic, however, um, there are strong indications that this came from, um, from it jumped from animals to, to man, right? And we've seen this not only with this current pandemic, we've seen this with the Ebola virus, we've seen this with the SARS, we've seen this with the MERS. So all of this ties to one thing, we need to take biodiversity seriously. Policies around nature-based solutions, policies around uh, renewable energy, policies around uh, agroecology agro should be at the front burner at this time. These are uh, some policies that will uh, help uh, in fast-tracking and restore, restore, restoring our lost environment. The drivers underpinning the urgent need to invest in restoring the world's ecosystems are compelling. They include a global population of some 2 billion additional people to feed, house, educate and find jobs for by 2035. And the reality that 50% of the world's GDP depends mostly on natural resources. change is real. Exactly. Climate change is real guys. Look at what we picked up in 10 minutes. Now imagine we do this every day. Every day. Our oceans are endangered. The sea animals are endangered. Even humans are endangered. We need to do this often. We need to create a lot of awareness in this community. They need to know that plastics must not end up in the ocean, neither do, should they end up at the dump sites. We have recyclers in Lagos now, they can help you turn this trash to well. Part of activity is to mark Earth Day, these youths are guarded here for one thing, to clean up this beach. Some of them are from Okwaja community who are joining to read the shoreline of plastic waste. When you live this for a long time, you have your environment being depleted, you have your health being, being um, compromised, you know, you have the, the, the air being compromised and the amount you will spend in the hospital to treat yourself from asthma, lung cancer, from health issues and environmental issues, it would actually be more than what you're going to get from here. This harvest of harmful plastic from the belly of the beach is not up to a ton, but it has a market value to reward those who fish them. Even so, the main idea is to sensitize the public on the need to clean up the environment. The world is an ocean community because it's covered by 70% of water. And if 70% of your body is under attack, you can't be okay. 
So it's very important that we do our best to amplify these activities. Well, it's, it's a continuous effort. So as we've, we've, we're here for the first time today, but we intend to establish a presence here and make a, build a relationship with the community, bring some receptacles to, to the community so that they can actually put the bottles in, in them as opposed to getting them on the beach and promise to be coming back to take those away. This urban forest and animal shelter initiative, this avocado tree is being planted in solidarity with Mother Earth. Simple acts such as this one will help restore our Earth, especially as it gradually continues to emerge from the damage of the coronavirus pandemic and the ravages of climate change. As little as, you might call it as little as just putting the, the what you call waste in the right place has a lot of impact on Mother Earth. What, what do I mean? We, have, we were talking about sorting our waste from source. You don't put your solid waste or recyclables, your metal, everything into one bag. We grow up with that knowledge. But thank God for the way things are turning out, awareness, advocacy, more insight has come, has come and we're, we're not trying to understand that we cannot put everything together in one bag. We need to separate. And you know what happens? If you, if you dare slap your mother, <laughs> she's going to hit you back. And that's exactly what is happening with nature. We're getting the reaction to our actions against her, which have been very, very negative indeed. And that's why we're seeing all the outbursts of fires, the outbursts of floods, the aberration in the weather patterns, and even the zoonotic pandemics, the diseases. While these acts are geared towards nurturing, preserving, and protecting the environment, they're also part of a loud call to action to restore the only planet that gives life to all who live on it. Farming doesn't require a large space or land. You can grow your food and rare animals in a very small plot of land. We take a look at sustainable agriculture, which allows for production of healthy foods without destroying the ability of future generations to do the same. Sustainable urban farming that we're promoting here was actually inspired when we appreciated that the food that was normally available in abundance in the huge urban sprawl of Lagos was actually getting scarce from time to time. We were noticing some food shortages. And this was uh, occasioned by the insecurity in various parts of the land where the food comes from, but also to a large degree by climate change, which was creating desertification and flooding and wrecking a whole lot of farmland. So we noticed that the price of the food was actually going up. And also we felt it was a bit of an anomaly that so much of the food that we consume in Lagos is imported from different parts of the country, sometimes very, very far away, you know, tomatoes all the way in from the north and so on. So we felt, no, 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 this, this needs to change. 
Because apart from the food having to come from a long distance, it also adds to the carbon footprint. The trucks have to bring the food in on a regular basis. You're bringing the food, bringing the food. So anyway, it's our tiny contribution towards uh, inspiring ourselves to tackle food shortages and the food insecurity that is going on. This particular part of the Lekki Park is not that large. It's about one plot of land. But when we finished developing the urban aspect, that is inclusive of the vertical farming, because the vertical farming is a very interesting new trend now, where you just go upwards and you put your, your soil in small containers. Um, vertical farming, you can actually produce far more on that little space than what you would normally be able to do. People don't have much space. I mean, when we're talking of farming in Lagos, sometimes people sort of, you know, shake their heads. How is that possible? Well, it is possible. It is possible. If you, first of all, farm the right sort of products, like snails, snails don't need much space at all. They don't need much space. And the vertical farming that we're doing needs very, very little space. And also the aquaculture, that is the type of fish farming we're doing. You, you don't need much space at all. You just need good regular water supply. And you know, luckily Lagos, because the groundwater level is quite low, it's not that difficult to tap the sort of water that the fish would be happy with. I want to thank God for the uh, facilitator. He has really gave us different type of snail and the one that will better us. We can use buckets to rear, we can use tire to rear, we can use uh, the one of ours that uh, they are going to use wire gauze to cover it. So when they now call on us, I say, oh, fine. I need to be serious with this project. This is my retirement project. And I believe God will take it up with us so that we will have a productive snail project and we'll be exporting our, our snail in Jesus' name. So it's just our little uh, contribution to the local community. And it's also, if I may venture to say, a little expression of the type of consciousness that needs to be adopted within humanity in general. One of the major contributors to these greenhouse gases is the type of uh, intensive mass uh, farming, especially a monocrop type of farming, machine uh, oriented type of farming that we're doing. It uh, degrades the capability of the soil because the soil has a capability, a natural capacity to actually absorb quite a lot of the CO2 particularly. Uh, with the, through the microorganisms that exist in the soil. But the chemicalizing and mechanizing of large-scale farming is wiping out all those microorganisms. Quite wasteful, especially the livestock aspects that we're doing now. The type of feed that we're giving a lot of the cows, particularly, it's not what they are used to. It's an intensive kind of feed and it promotes a, a lot more of release of uh, methane gas from them. So there's different things that we're doing with our agricultural activity that is actually having a long-term negative impact. The challenge is that the short-term gains can be quite obvious. You, you know, with heavy chemicalizing, mechanizing, you can grow a lot more food in, in a large area, but then over a long term, that area eventually will hardly be able to grow any more food at all. When I started this farm here, about 40 years ago, I came into contact with 
some of our local farmers, and I could see that what they were doing was quite sustainable. Even their bush burning, the way they would burn the bush was quite delicate. They wouldn't allow the bush to dry too much. They just cut it maybe after, burn it about maybe one week or two weeks after cutting it so that a lot of the leaves and the twigs would dry, would burn. And that would give them some fertilizer ash that would go into the soil. But it wouldn't damage the soil with too much heat. They could continue to farm on one plot over a long period of time by doing rotational farming. So they were doing for sustainable farming, which we now totally rejected and completely embraced the Western farming system, which actually are designed more for their type of soil conditions. GMOs are products of genetic engineering, which is a technology that allows scientists to create plants, animals, and microorganisms by manipulating genes at the cellular level in a way that isn't possible by natural processes. But there are concerns on the consumption of these kind of foods from Nigeria's market shelves. This coalition staged a walk to the office of the governor of Lagos State to present a petition demanding a ban on GMOs, saying the unrestrained release of this kind of crops affect human and environmental health and the livelihood of small-scale farmers. We have a set of key demands, and the demands are one, a nullification of permits issued for importation and release of GMOs, GMO beans, GMO maize, GMO cotton into the country, and this because we say these permits have been issued without regard for the complaints just like we are making here of millions of nigerians and does not have the consent of many nigeria is not a dustbin we are nigerians and we are going nowhere we are asking for them to leave nature alone and stop disturbing the nature we want a nigerian free gmo we also called for the repeal of the national biosafety management act saying it's fall short of its expectations and what the farmer wants is to control what he grows and what he eats. But this act permits unwholesome foods to come into the country, and some of them are already on the shelves, some of them are in the open market, and it will compromise not only our food systems but also our health. Some of their recommendations include an investment in an agricultural system such as agroecology, which promotes soil health and biodiversity, and the provision of infrastructure access to land and credit schemes for farmers, which will in turn aid the production of healthy foods for the people. The rains are here again, and the Lagos State Government is appealing to residents living in low-lying areas to relocate to higher grounds. This is in light of a forecast predicting heavy rains that will result in flooding. Last year, the Nigerian Meteorological Agency had predicted 240 days of rainfall for Lagos, while the annual showers were put at 1,750 millimeters. This year's prediction is put at between normal and above normal rainfall. It is expected that increasing frequency of extreme weather events for this year will likely experience days of extremely high amounts of rainfall which may result 
in flooding. To this end, Commissioner for the Environment in Lagos State says flood control measures are being stepped up to contain any eventuality from the imminent rainfall. Towards ensuring a flood free and hygienic environment in the state, the Ministry has embarked on all year round building maintenance of effective and efficient flood control, in addition to an extensive and sustainable solid waste management system. Our emergency flood abatement grants are consistently since January, silting and working on various linkages for our secondary and primary channels. The level here is charged efficiently and that has extension based. In the meantime, Residents living in low-lying areas were asked to relocate and desist from acts that could lead to flooding. Therefore, the low-lying the low lying areas of Agility, Agoyi, or Agoyi, Togolo, and Ajibule communities in Lagos State are being closely monitored with respect to the likelihood of the river flood and all, and all other river basins in the state. Attitude change is, is what we need. Every year, government spend billions on dredging canals and constructing new channels. But people must, we are dealing with 24 million people. Most of them don't know what you're talking about. To them, take it to the good drains, take it to the good, take it to the that's all that's necessary. But we'll, we'll overcome. The Lagos state government also warned motorists to observe the prescribed speed limits during the rainy season to avoid.